Hi everyone, I just wanted to share this reverse canvas with you, Angel Wings. So I'm going to do a short video for you. So this is a beautiful rice paper by Stamperia. And as you can see, we've used fibre paste, crackle paste, the matte decoupage, fabric mist medias, some stencil paste, some um, acrylic paints, uh, lazores, waxes. But I'm going to show you how to use all these and also how to create this canvas. So let's get started. Okay, so are you all ready? Got your cups of tea and got your materials ready? Here we go. So let me just move this out of the way. And so we've got our reverse canvas. And again, this, um, we have this as a kit on the website. Or if you've got any old canvases you don't want to use, you can obviously use that as well. So the rice paper I've chosen to use today is this beautiful, lovely, a walk away little girl from Stamperia, or lady I should say really. And that's what I'm gonna be working on. But first, let's start on the actual canvas itself. So what I'm going to be doing is actually working to cover some of these staples as you can see on the back and also to create the middle of my canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with giving it a coat of paint. I've actually gone for different colours. You can choose any colours that you wish. You can even ask us if there's certain colours that you want if we have them in stock. So I'm actually starting with an acrylic paint and I'm going to start off with that. And each time I do this I do it differently but this time I'm going to start off with this beautiful, it's called indigo blue actually, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, cover this just very very roughly. I'm going to have a real richness to this um, finished one. I always do it quite pale so I thought let's go for something a little bit richer and as you can see I'm applying it straight to the canvas, no primer, nothing. So let's just go down. Don't worry about this too much because we're actually going to crackle over the top of this as well. So let's just start the edges and start working with that. So as you can see very very easy just taking an acrylic paint. Now I've actually used a glossy on this occasion uh, but you can use a matte, you can use a metallic. I know we've given you a metallic in the kit. Um, but again, it really does not matter because a lot of this will get covered um, by, by the um, crackle paste. But also we're going to be using this in the inside as well. And what I find is, is I sometimes use primer to dry things, um, sorry, lighten things. So if you want a little bit of lightness in there, um, you can do. So Pip set me a timer because we can record for 40 minutes on this package um, and, and then we have to start. <laughs> so it's a bit of a challenge as well really. So but you know it's a good challenge because otherwise I'll just keep talking, I'll wander off, I'll do other things, think about other things. And this way it's a really quick way for you to, to get into some of the techniques. Obviously, we will post some pictures of the finished product. You know, like anything, you come back to it the next day, you think, oh, that would be really nice. So you can just see all I'm doing is painting this. Now, some of this I could have done before, but I really do want to take you through a step-by-step -step guide. And I'm just doing this off the top of my head um, because that's my style. Um, and I'm not too worried. I'm not a, I am a perfectionist in some things. So when it comes to my home, uh, when it comes to some of my other things, but when it comes to mixed media, I think this is my avenue to actually be, be messy, be creative, do something a little bit different. So here we go. So I think I'm quite happy with that. And one of the things you have to remember is, is you've also got this inside Bit on all of this so the best way to do that is is just again just go in 
and just put some color into that as well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't matter if you get some on the canvas. Now this is sort of like a, a shabby chic reverse canvas really. Um, and this is all about uh, character building. I know, I know Pip's definitely ran classes on this in her style. Um, I've, have, I've done a couple of classes on this as well, but I know a lot of you bought the kit and have been asking me, and I know Julie has, I think there's another lady, isn't there, Pip from one of your friends has been asking us to, to, to put this up yes, on. quite a few asking. So what we wanted to do was bring you this because especially at the moment when you're stuck indoors, this is a really nice, inspirational, very nice sort of angel um, canvas to do. So that's, I'm quite happy with that now. Some bits are covered, some bits are not. So let me just show you that. Okay, we can do the edges right at the end um, of the canvas. So the next thing for me to do is, is just give this a quick dry um, with the heat gun. So let's give this a quick dry. So thank you, Pip's just passed me my little heat gun, which is a great, has been helping me out all day. So, as long as it's touch dry, I'm quite happy with this. Now we're going to start adding the primer and the packer paste. So, as long as it's touch dry, I'm not worried. There we go. Don't worry too much. As a tip, what I say is wherever you started first, go back to that area because that will be the driest. So um, let me do that. So what we need is, this is optional, you can make it crackly or you don't have to, but I like to add the crackle paste. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some primer. So I'm going to use, use a different brush because this brush has gone a bit bluey for me. I don't want to contaminate, but actually I'm going to use my spatula. Because what I want to do is, I don't want it to be perfect, so I'm actually going to take my spatula and really put that on quite thinly. So this will give me a slightly different effect if I was using it with a brush. And I quite like this effect. And again, you can see the blue is actually dried. And we're just going to go through that and we're just going to add. You can always, you know, use different crackle paste. I know we've got lots of different types. You could use a translucent, you could use a metallic, but I'm going to use the, the our classic, which I call our classic, is that beautiful, easy to use um, white crackle primer and paste, the universal. So again, this is available as an optional. Um, I know a lot of you have already got this. It's like a staple now, for most of you but this is something you can either add into the kit um, or leave out or just use what you've got at home. So let me turn that over so it makes it a little bit easier for me to do. So all I'm doing is just a very light, light paste. There we go. So let's just put it on this side, just not too much. Don't want, I don't want it to be uh, this is the whole thing. The primer is not what makes the, the cracks bigger or smaller. It's got nothing to do with the primer at all. The primer is just something that the, the crackle paste itself works with to split it because of the difference in its drying time. There are lots of different products on the market, but I have to say for me, at least for me, the Pentart crackle paste and primer is something that I would not be without. It's a bit like mascara. Just gives you that look that you can find, otherwise you wouldn't. So that's quite simple. So that was the, let me just show you that. That was the actual um, primer. So you can see that's, that's what I've been using. Now, the other one that you need now is the actual paste. So just make sure you've got the cracking paste as your second one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly put this on 
Okay, I'll dry it very quickly. And again, it doesn't have to be totally dry, <laughs> but it could be dry. Why are you laughing? Because you can see me walking behind you oh. like, in, my, in my penguin pajamas. So, I can't, I mustn't say this, but Mindy has still, or Pip, has still got her pajama bottoms on. So, if you see someone in the background, that is Pip in her pajamas. And you may have spotted her in one of our other videos as well. So, we're a very relaxed family. I hope you're all keeping safe. I hope you're all well. It's very difficult times at the moment. But you know, crafting is one of those things that we can all share, we can all do together. And we are about to start um, our virtual videos, um, which we, you can actually craft along with us. Um, we're also going to be doing Technique Tuesdays, we'll be sending some of that information out as well. If any of you didn't hear that, what I was trying to say was we're going to be doing Technique Tuesdays where you can have questions and answer times, chat with us. Um, and then on other days, um, we're going to be doing virtual videos. We're going to be setting up a new system for that, Kindness of Paul. Um, and we'll be sharing the links with you. And you can craft along with us. You can buy the kits ahead of time or you can use products you've already got in your home and follow us. So that's what I've got to. I've dried it. You can still see some of it, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. So what I need to do now is I might have to get a new crackle paste from Pip. Uh, so paste? yes, please. I think I've just I didn't want to finish. Nearly. So I'm just putting a little bit of crackle paste on top. Just one thing I do keep on hand is crackle paste. Are you looking for white? Or yeah, black? white, please. White. I should be paying attention. So we're just, uh, all I'm doing using the same palette knife, I've wiped it and I'm just putting that on. So there's a, there's a little bit left in that pip, so maybe we can use that for another project. Oh, I'm getting a new one, I'm getting a new one. <laughs> so that's good. So Oops, there you go. Yeah, I'll leave that with you. Thank you, sweetheart. No worries. And um, so the thicker you put it, the bigger the cracks will be. The thinner you put it, the smaller the cracks. Now the smoother you put it, the more even the cracks as well. So again, it depends on how you're doing this. Now I'm doing quite um, thin places, thicker places, and I'm just putting this on. So it's really important that we know roughly where we're going with this. So, there we go. So, it's just, it's, there's no, the, the pent-up crackle paste is so easy to use, you really don't have to worry. Just move that down to us. Um, and let's just keep going with this. So, there we go. Ooh. This is so nice. The sun's shining here. I hope it is back in the UK, at least a little bit. Um, it is beautiful here. We are in a sort of bubble, I have to say. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, Paul very kindly is holding the fort. We've been a right trooper, so as always. Um, so I'm really pleased that we have coverage from both sides of the world, as they say. So that's just your crackle paste. So that's done. And what I say is always wipe your tools and always make sure you put your lids back on. One of the things is that products do dry out. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to take the heat gun to that and see the crackle is here. So I'm show you that in a I don't know if you can see that, but what I'll do is once I've dried it a little bit, is I will bring it back and show you a bit closer to the camera. You 
it's absolutely beautiful. The, the richness of the blue and then the white, which we are going to go over. Where you've got the crackle paste thin, will already start to crack. That's the beauty of this crackle paste. It doesn't take a lot for it to dry. Oh, it's beautiful, even if I say so. I'm not going to share that with you in a minute. I'll just go to the top of here. If you can see some of it already. So, so this going. I absolutely love this effect. I must admit, that every time I do it, it always, it always, you know, surprises me that I love it as much as I do. So let me just show you this. Can you see those crackles? There you go. Look at that. They're absolutely beautiful. Can you see those? Absolutely. So pleased with that, I have to say. And how quick was that? Right. The next bit is we need to start looking at the rice paper before I start doing anything in the inside. Now, the way I would suggest is, is position it a little bit lower from the top. So position the head at the top. Let me turn it around so you can have a quick lozy at that. So you've got the head at the top, and then you've got the dress flowing downwards. What I'm gonna do is, now I'm going to take a, a wet brush. Let me see. Here we go. This is I use. I'm using a water brush actually for the first time. And all I'm going to do is draw as if I'm drawing around um, the rice paper. So let's just draw around that. And if you find, have I got any water actually in there? Very little. But that doesn't matter because I've got a. Do you want uh, me to fill it up? No, I'm fine, thanks, sis. I'm just going to just take it, use it as a brush really, and take it across. So. Is what well. this is nice and it's a really detailed one and I really liked it. So taking some water, all I'm doing now is I'm doing that technique that we do a lot where we start to tear the paper. So let me tear this paper for you. Do you know it's uh, quite hard to do a video that is uh, like this in 40 minutes but you know what this is something you can take your timer at home and do. You're 15 minutes in. Am I? Thank you. I'm 15 minutes in. Oh my God. I've been told officially. I'm 15 minutes in. Bye, Pip. So it does go really quickly, I have to say. And if it means that I have to do two parts, I will have to do two parts, as they say. So let me give this a go. So all I'm doing is I'm just splitting that way because I do want to keep that writing um, to add, add to the sides. Um, I want to keep you know, her intact. And again, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful paper, beautiful technique. We've just had some new ones released, uh, they're A3, and there are some beautiful ones that you can use this technique on. I can't wait to do one of those, but a lot of you have asked me about this one. So I wanted to first do this, and then we can take it from there. What it is, you don't want to leave any, for me, I don't want to leave anything which is too harsh. Now don't worry about the bottom because we're actually going to cover that with the fibre paste that we have. But still, I'm still going to do it because you, it's, you don't want, if for any reason you don't cover it with fibre paste, you don't want it. So I'm just pulling at it, fraying it away at the bottom even. So it's a really nice effect. Now, if you didn't want to do any fibre paste, you didn't want to do anything else, Take off my little hands, I've obviously got a bit of glue on there from somewhere. Um, then, you know, you could keep it in its simplest form. So let's keep going with this. There we go. So now you will see she looks absolutely fabulous. Now she's sort of sitting very grand, Ooh, don't want to pull it too much, sort of in the middle. Now one of the things that you have to be careful of is, is you want nothing to happen underneath her. The minute you have something happening underneath her, what will happen is you will lose this beautiful sharpness of this design. Because you've got a, a cream background, you don't even have to colour that. Now, the easiest way to do this for me is you can either lay her in and work around her, or you can just pencil her out and then work around that. Now, I actually like to lay her in 
But before I do that, I'm going to give her a little bit of colour on the reverse. So let's work with that first. So on the reverse, let's take, I'm actually taking some Lazor. I love Lazor, and you'll, you'll, all, you'll all get used to that. But would it be possible to pass a little plastic tray to me, if you don't mind, or the one we've been using? Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, so I'm just going to put mine into a little tray, because that's how, I'm using a blue and a purple. This is, again, you don't need to colour her. If you've got watercolours, if you've got other, if you've got the mister that's in the kit, you can use that as well. So just have a look what you want to do. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking it in, in really just colouring her. I'm using a purple and a blue, which I think is quite a nice combination. Not too, not too bad um, to sort of just colour in the dress part. And again, you know, it's up to you. You could go to town and you could really colour her in, you know, if you're, if you're into your colouring, you know, so you could easily do that. No. And the shading's there, so that's again will help you shade her. Um, bear in mind that the skirt part of it is going to be covered. So what you can do is just tailor it down, which is what I'm going to be doing. If you want to colour it, you know, please, please do so. You don't need a lot. I've got I haven't got actually any water in my water brush, which is no problem at all. Um, and I'll just show you what that looks like. Can you see how that's coming out? It's very, very subtle, but it is absolutely beautiful. And you can turn it over and have a look how that's working for you. I love the way the purple and the blue just blend so well together. A little bit more purple in. It's just such a nice, the Lazors are understated. Seriously, I think that I must, it must be one of my, Next to my crackle paste, these are becoming my next favourites. Very good value for money. Um, extremely uh, useful in terms of woods, um, staining, in, in, in colouring, water colouring, in adding to your pastes. I don't know, there's just so many different things that you can be doing with them. But I think we underestimate what you can actually do with them. So let me just carry on with this. So there we go. And all I'm doing is just adding little bits of colour that I think will really make this stand out. Um, you could keep this plain. You don't need to colour it. I just like to colour it because I think it adds a little bit more definition to the entire project. And I think it makes her stand proud and you can put, I have in the past put lace on mine, dress and stuff as well. So we do the moulds, so you could put lace on them. I know we've got pictures of lots of different ones we've done over the time. And I just think this is such a lovely, lovely technique. Now can you see how lovely that looks? So if you think you've left anything or you want to do a little bit more, like she's got her bracelet there, maybe I want to just do that a little bit purple. Um, there's no harm in doing that. Any way you think you've left anything or you've got a gap, then just go back in and then just do that. You can go over the colours, you can do the edging a little bit different. So let me have a look what she looks like on the other side. So let me have a turn it around. So for me, she's really, really beautiful. And that's exactly what I wanted. Put a little bit of shading into this corner as well as I've coloured the other side. There's no rights and wrongs in mixed media. It's very, very therapeutic, and that's what it would be. I'm doing all this on the reverse. You could do it on the other side. It really does not matter on this occasion. But I quite like it underneath, and I quite like this look. Right. And we're just going to go with this bit here. I'm going to leave it at that. What I'm going to do now is... Um, just wipe my brush off. And the next thing I'm going to do is just give that a quick dry. Oops, just seems stuck all my rice paper to me. Wipe my little mat down, look, being good. And um, just a very quick dry because we just want it to be dry. It doesn't have to be very dry, but you don't want when you put the media down, but it's going to be moving. Just give that quick dry. 
Now if you want to, you can also colour her hair. Or you can leave it as it is. I'm going to put a little bit of blue into her hair. And I might do that on the top, just to show you the differences. Because it's much more vibrant when you do it on the top than you do on the underneath. And again, you can add on the top as well. Ooh, her wings are already flying. Okay, let's bring the canvas in. Because otherwise we will, as Pip says, run out of time a little bit. So, I love this. And I don't know, when you're crying with the lazure, it gives it a fabric feel. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm taking the matte decoupage. Again, you get this in your kit. And I'm going to just use, use my brush. Let's see, hopefully I've got not too much blue on that. There we go. And I'm going to dip that in. And I'm just going to take that and stroke, put it straight onto the canvas. This is the most important bit is that you get your paper adhered to the canvas and do not worry if you go outside it, it dries clear. It's, it's really to adhere the paper. If you miss any, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get air bubbles underneath where it's gonna lift. So what I do is I put a good coat on this. It takes a little bit of time because it's obviously a lot, lot thicker. There we go. Now the bottom bit, you've got a wider bit, so let's go a little bit wider. And then just keep taking that. And you'll know if it starts to lift, you'll know straight away that you need to put some more on. I'll show you in a minute. Just do like a little bit. And some people, like I said, prefer it pencil drawn. Now I want her a little bit higher. So I need to go a little bit higher up here as well. So this is how you can work it out. And once you stick this down, rice paper is very, very forgiving. There we go. And then what I do is, you can either stick it like this and start working outwards, or you just put it down, flatten it as much as you can. Oh, I'm loving this finish on her dress. And anywhere you think you need more, do go in and put some more. So I know these sides are a bit bigger than I thought. Yeah, that's exactly, and then push. Always cover the top, so push outwards. Now, if your lazor is wet, or you've got blue on your brush or anything like that that will come through but this is this is exactly what i want her to look like so she's looking absolutely fantastic don't worry that you can see white over the top because that does not matter okay so we're getting there now i'm just going to give you an idea of how to do this today because a lot of you have been asking so let's push this all down. I love the fact that if there's creases, if it hasn't come out quite as you want it, because at the end of the day, it's just this is your interpretation, this beautiful rice paper. And every time I do it, it's different, absolutely different. Now the bottoms of this are going to be covered with the fad paste so not to worry too much but you don't want any lifting too much so now it's it's not the right thing to do just to keep putting matte medium over the top if you've not got it underneath it will lift that goes for fabric it goes for glass it goes for any technique we do with rice paper okay hopefully you can see how beautiful she looks oh, you see that dress is looking, you could leave it like that, the sad bits to the side. But let's carry on. Let's get to the next level. So she's in there. And while we're at it, well, no, actually, I'll add that later. So she's up there. Now, I think I might just put a little bit of blue into her little flowers here. And you can see it's going to be slightly richer than it would be under the top. And I really like that effect. And I absolutely love the way it's coming out. So there we go. And if you wanted to, you could put a few little bits of highlight in her hair as well. No, we don't have blue hair always, but hey, there we go. So I'm very, very happy with the way she's looking. Next thing is, is we've also said it's optional. If you've got any stencils, you don't have to use this one. We've actually given you some stencil paste in the kit is to use the actual stencil. So what I'm going to do is, the Deli Art stencils are absolutely beautiful to work with. I'm just going to sit it on top of her. I'm going to take some stencil paste. I'm taking the new brass because I absolutely love this. Now you could take any colour you want to. 
so it's not a problem. So basically, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put not too much, but just a little bit of stencil. Now, I think before I do that, I might put some colour into the background. I'm just thinking out loud because otherwise I've got to, no, actually, no, I'm going to do it this way. So I always do it the other way. So all we're doing is taking the stencil paste and we're just going to put it through the stencil. There we go. And this is not about it being perfect. I don't want this, whoops, I don't want this to be perfect. I just want it to have some sort of design element behind it. Okay, so that's a little bit there. Let's pull that through. So there you go. So it's not perfect, but it's exactly what I want. Uh, don't need to do the dress. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little bits here. Now, if you want it to be designed, have it designed. But if you don't, then just do what I'm doing. And again, all we're doing is just putting some of this in. Let's turn this around. Let's put a little bit up here. Let's go into there. And the good thing about these stencils is you can actually hold them and they come out absolutely beautiful. Take your time at home, but what I'm doing is, is I'm making it using the stencil paste to really create a little bit of a background in the back. Okay, so pulling that through. And I'll do one little bit at the bottom here just to, to sort of add a little bit of gold down here. Don't build onto the girl too much and don't build onto your dress at all at the bottom because that's where it's all going to be covered and that would be such a waste of products. You've got 15 minutes left. Is that all I've got? Oh, she's telling me I've got 15 minutes left. Right, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to give Pip, my kind assistance, this beautiful dirty stencil. Um, so this is the circular one by Dali Art. So that's a really nice one to work with. Um, but yeah, so we're just, I'm just working through it slowly. And she's telling me, how many minutes? 15. <gasps> 15 minutes, ladies. So that means I've been on, on it already nearly 30 minutes. Oh, Where's the time go when you're having fun? So now what I'm going to do is get that quick dry. So you can see it's just creating a little bit of a background in there. There we go. So that that can dry while I'm at it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, now it's optional, you could even build in this paper you had, you could actually build that into the side up here as well. So if you want to, just tear a little bit off, and if you want to, you can start building that into the side. Let's do that while we're here. I'm going to run out of time as they say. Oh, I'll be fine, I will say. There we go. So basically, I just want to add a little bit more to the side. So let's use that matte medium to cover this bit. And what we want to do is we just want to hold that there. Now you've already crackled that, which will be a really nice effect as well. And all we're doing is just putting that down because it's just so beautiful. It would be a shame not to. Now if you find you're going over, don't worry. Just take your finger, slice it through, because it's a bit wet there, pull that back up again, and just tuck it in again. It's such a nice effect. Pip's done a great job. She's washed my stencil, wiped it on her clothes, I think, by the looks of it. <laughs> I couldn't see this paper towel. <laughs> so really, you could just, you know, if you try, try to bring them up well, but some you win, some you don't. So all I've done is I'm just bringing that in and then I'm going to come off camera a bit, bringing that to the side. So now due to time, I'll probably finish the sides off and I will show you all of that. And that again, just adds more character. And if you can see that, can you see that? It's going to be like script writing just there. Now. And I wanted to do this live so that you could actually see how this actually works. So that's that bit done. And the next bit I want to do is, is I want to start to bring in 
some of the, the blue again. And what I'm going to do on this occasion is I'm going to take some of the white primer and some of the tinge of that blue. Just for your fiber proof. Thank you. When you get up to it. Is, uh, what she means is get a move on. That's what she means. She's so pretty. Is she pretty? So let's use a little bit of that blue. And let me, I'm actually going to mix it onto this. I've got a mat just there. I'm just mixing the two in. Take a little bit of my spatula not to contaminate the, the primer. Just put that onto my mat. Let me bring that into camera shot because otherwise you might not see what I'm doing. There you go. So, so I've just put a little bit of that down. Uh, oops. Get it onto my mat as well. Actually, just wipe my palette knife. It's a really good thing to do. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the white and the blue. And you don't even have to mix them together because I want a really pale background. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start swiping this at the background. Yeah. And I don't mind if my gold gets a little bit covered um, because I, don't, I think it's a little bit harsh for my project anyway. So can you see that? It's just, I love the way the canvas and everything works together. Um, if you find it's thick, because paste is thick, then just take a little bit of water and then just start to blend that down again. And I just love the fact that you're getting a bit of gold, you're getting a bit of this, you're getting a bit of that, um, and it's all coming together really nice. And because the paste is so thick, you can get this really nice sort of effect. And again, let me move that out of the way. I'm going to use it to cover my little paper as well because I, I don't want the harshness of the white. Um, using it to cover little bits here. So can you see how that all comes together? You don't need a lot of anything. And I think that's where people go wrong is, is they think, oh, you know, if I've got to create a canvas this large, and this is a large canvas, and it's going to take a lot more than what I've done. Take a little bit of the blue as well because I absolutely love this blue. I'm in love with it now. And so we can start to build in a little bit of darker shadowing as well. And I just love the way it all comes together. You might want it a little bit darker at the bottom. Now remember we are going to put the fibre paste at the bottom. So just be aware of that. And let's take the primer um, and then start again with some lighter bits at the bottom. Again, you know, take your time at home. Obviously we, I'm doing it within a certain time. Doesn't matter if you go over her as well. Doesn't, it's, the whole idea is, is you've got it all blended together. Right, so what we can also do at this point is we can start to paint the wings. Now we are going to put a tutorial together to show you how the wings work. So that's the wings there. I was told I put them the wrong way. So no. you can do them anywhere anyway, you want though. So you can have them this way. Yeah, you can have them closed or you can have them open. Open, way. which is this, this way. That's open, yeah. yeah. And then closed would be... Be the opposite way. So yeah. long so bits of wings down you. or up. We're going to go up, I think, because we've got a wider space at the top. And this is really where you want to position them. And there's personal preference. When I've done the workshop, some people don't uh, exactly use the at all. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is it's very, very easy. You just take your wings, you start to put your I'm using that beautiful blue, which I've watered water down, which I've actually done with the um, acrylic. And these are a little bit wet because um, in fact, Pip very kindly made these wings for me this morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do you one just to show you the effect and then I'll do the other bit and finish that off for you and post the pictures for you as well at the same time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of that, you remember the lasors I used? I'm adding a little bit of the purple lasor to this as well because I think that will give it that lovely sort of subtle effect. And again, you can bring in colours you've used. Can you see that? It's absolutely beautiful. So let me just finish the edges off on that and I'll show you how that's going to look once I've finished with it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to use a little bit of the stencil paste as a paint, which you can, or if you've got any gold paint, you can use that. Um, 
but that's another effect that you can create. So let me quickly just dry that off just for now. You can see that I'm just drying it. And again, this is such a beautiful way to create effects. And again, it doesn't have to be totally, totally perfect. So can you see that? So I absolutely love the effect. And if you think you've missed anything, just go back in again and just start to build that up. And then what I would do is I'd get some gold wax and I would actually take a little bit oops, and I would start to spread that onto the wings. And this is where you'll see they actually come to life. And I'm actually loving this effect. You've got a little bit of lazor coming in, you've got a little bit of the, the acrylic coming in, you've got the, the, the beautiful effect. Can you just see that? See if you can all see that. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm loving that effect. Now, so she would sit there. I will finish it off and I will show you it. Um, of how this is going to look because like I say we've got a certain amount of time and I want to sort of show you the main techniques of this uh, this this part now the, the other technique that you really have to do is let me see if there's any more left on there let me give that a quick wash is now you need to probably start to add uh, I would actually just add the wax because I like this whiteness um, let me just add a light bit of the wash from when we've been doing this on the. I don't want it to be really thick. I want it to be a light wash. So it takes away from the whiteness, but it doesn't take away from what I've been doing. So I absolutely love this. And then I'm going to wax this once it's dry. So this is just this is to show you how easy it is to do such a beautiful canvas. You could be using any rice paper, any embellishments that you have. But I know so many of you wanted me to show you this. You've got three minutes. Is that all I've got? Yeah. Oh, she's telling me I've only got three minutes. <laughs> oh. So in that three minutes, the last thing I needed to show you and this was how to do the fiber paste. Maybe that could be a second video. That could be actually. Because that's quite... That's something that's really hard to grasp. I, I it is. Hope, it is. Um, you need to show them a few times. I took me forever to learn. Okay. So what I'll do is, and I think Pip's got a good point here, is, is I could do a second video just showing you the fibre paste. So that's how we're going to create the dress underneath. Um, and it is quite essential to this project. So if I can say goodbye to you now and come back with the fibre paste, then I will do that. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the other wing. I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. And then we're going to work on the fiber paste. All right, then. Bye for now, everyone. See you soon. Switch you off.